Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Natasha Harris, and I'm a massage and yoga therapist at UCI Susan Samueli Integrative Health Institute. First, I want to say, although we are very disappointed we are not able to host Women's Wellness Day in person this year, we are excited to bring you some well-being sessions virtually. So thank you again for joining us. Before we start today, I want to review a few Zoom tips for this presentation. Please note, we are recording this session, and we would like to invite you to clear all your distractions, clear off your desk, close your doors, and close any other applications on your device. Whatever helps you become less distracted, distracted and more mindful and present during this day. We would love to see all your smiling faces. So if you are comfortable being on video, please click the start video on the bottom of your screen. Also, everyone will remain on mute. So to communicate with the host, please take advantage of the chat feature by clicking the chat button also located on the bottom of the screen. At the end of, our, at the, end of the presentation, we will be holding a Q&A session with the Director of Development, Alex Anderson. So please be sure to send Alex your questions in the chat box as well. As many of you know, one of the main focal areas for the UCI Susan Samueli Integrative Health Institute is clinical care. Our main clinic is located on Bristol Street in Costa Mesa. We also have satellite clinics in Yorba Linda and Newport Beach at the Pacific Breast Care Center. All of the clinics offer evidence-based care from integrative, naturopathic, and osteopathic doctors, as well as nurse practitioners, massage therapists, acupuncturists, and nutritionists. Also, appointments can now be performed via telemedicine for your convenience from home. If you would like to schedule an appointment, please call all Coast Clinic 714-424-9001. We are also happy to announce the Institute is opening a new integrative clinic in Newport Beach near Fashion Island at the end of July. This new clinic will feature all of our current clinic services with the addition of new integrative specialty services such as integrative dermatology, cardiology, and sports medicine, to name a few. Now, I'd like to introduce our speaker. Heather Rice is a licensed acupuncturist and has been with Samu Susan Samueli Institute since 2007. Heather has a master's in traditional oriental medicine, and she has been studying and using aromatherapy for over 25 years in her acupuncture practice. You may also recognize her from our well-being circle, Hikes with Heather. So without further ado, Heather will be spicing up your life with aromatherapy from your kitchen cabinet. Have fun. Hello, welcome. I am Heather Rice and I am coming to you here from San Clemente in my dining room. Um, and hopefully before we start, I don't know if everyone heard, but we're gonna be looking at orange. Um, so I picked a nice orange for us to use. We're also gonna be looking at fennel seeds. So um, these were in my kitchen cabinet here, as well as some ginger root and some mint or a mint tea bag. So if you have any of those in your kitchen cabinet and you wanted to grab them, we're gonna be kind of smelling them together. So I would love for you to be able to smell as we go along. So this is an interactive session. Um, the title of my talk here is Aromatherapy in Your Kitchen Cabinet, um, looking at the fennel seeds, orange, ginger, and peppermint. I'm going to share my screen for a couple slides here. So we wanna look at what is exactly aromatherapy. Um, the aromatherapy is the use of plants, scent um, for therapeutic purposes. 
And we can either use these oils by inhalation, putting them topically on our body or internally taking them into our body. Aromatherapy has been used in ancient Egypt and in India for thousands of years. Also, our Native Americans also use a form of aromatherapy, what they call smudging, to, specifically with white sage and sea, sweet grass, as also cedar to help dispel negative energy and increase positive energy. So what are these essential oils? So they are the volatile oils from the plant that give the plant specifically its scent. Um, these plants are distilled in a distillery and then they're usually made into either perfume or fragrance um, or for medicinal use. Show you how this process works. So what we do is that you take a, this is a distillery and you put a flame under the big pot. Uh, you put the plant material kind of up on the top and as it steams, it goes down through a condenser and cools. And the essential oil is heavier, so it stays more at the top. And then a fragrant water comes out at the bottom. Um, one of, and then the essential oil is gathered from there. So this is called the steam distillation process. And it's one of the highest quality ways of distilling essential oils. There's other ways as well, but we're focusing, most of all the oils here have been steam distilled. So what happens when we actually inhale these essential oils? So we, as we smell a rose, um, the scent goes in through our nasal cavity and it activates the olfactory neurons which activate then the olfactory bulb into our brain and connect to the limbic system. The limbic system is one of the oldest parts of our brain and connects with our cerebral cortex where we can make conscious decisions as well as um, activities of sexual nature, digestive systems, and emotional behavior. So when we inhale the essential oils through, usually over here, I don't think you can see out of frame, but I have a diffuser going of, of orange essential oil. About 50% of that oil is absorbed in the brain and activated in the body. Um, when we use a diffuser, we really want to be in a, a close proxi proximity of the, of the air that's being diffused to have its best um, absorption rate. Topically though, only about 5% of essential oils are absorbed um, through the skin in that way. So it's not the most effective mechanism of action. I mean, we do use a lot in the clinic. I will use um, essential oils mixed with my massage oil um, to help with pain or if my patients are having a lot of anxiety we will use them topically, but inhalation is the preferred method. And looking through the evidence, the most strong evidence shows moderate confidence that aromatherapy is beneficial for pain in dysmenorrhea, so painful menstrual cycles, so for menstrual cramps. It's also potentially effective for pain during labor and childbirth. Um, there's some evidence showing its blood pressure is, is, helps with reducing hypertension. It's beneficial for stress, depression, sleep in hemodialysis patients, but I've seen effectiveness of sleep just without being on hemodialysis. Um, also, um, anxiety, they use it a lot. We use it a lot in um, the hospital setting before you uh, go into surgery. It helps relieve some anxiety that way. And also improving sleep quality. So how do we wanna choose a quality essential oil? It's very important. There's so many different brands out there that you can purchase from say Sprouts or Mother's Market or Whole Foods. Um, you really want, quality is better. So there's a thing called the paper test, which I'm not gonna demonstrate, but basically let's say this was a piece of paper. You would put a drop of the essential oil on the paper 
and leave it. And then at an, after an hour, the, the drop should be um, evaporated to show that it's just the pure essential oil, that there's not any solvents in the product or any other sort of contaminants. You also want to look for the scientific label. So this is one of the oils we're gonna look at in a second called um, Petagrain, or I like to say Petit Grand, because I took French in high school and I should use my French. Um, this is actually from Orange Leaf. And it's in a dark amber bottle, which you can kind of see here without the label there. So you either wanna have it in a dark amber bottle or a cobalt colored bottle like this. You want to have the scientific name. I don't know if you can see, but you wanna see the scientific name on the product. This says citrus oranthium leaf, and that's the genus and species. It also has the certified organic symbol on it as well, so we know that this is organic. Um, it's, or it could be wild crafter, but this happens to be organic. And one of the things when we store our essential oils, we don't want them to stay in our car like and get hot. So you don't want to expose it to heat, direct sunlight, and you want to keep the lid, it does evaporate. So if you just leave this oil out like this, it will evaporate after a few days or maybe a month. So you always want to keep your lids on tight, especially to prevent them from pouring out. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. Let's see because we're gonna play with our oils for a second. So the first oil we're gonna look at is sweet orange. So orange, the reason why I wanted to start with orange is um, it's very uplifting and it's very useful for anxiety. So I don't know if you saw when Natasha was introing, I was smelling one of my favorite parts of the orange, which is um, called neroli. And it's actually from the orange blossom. So what's really special about orange is that there's, you could use so many parts of the plant. Um, sweet orange is um, cold pressed. So it's a different process than the steam distillation. It's a cold pressed of the rinds. And it acts as an antidepressant. It has antispasmodic properties. It improves digestion. It's also antimicrobial. So you'll have seen maybe in, um, cleaning products where they use orange oil to help clean off, um, you know, dirty surfaces. So if you're making your own uh, cleaning products, you can use orange essential oil in it as well. Um, I think we're going to be sharing our slides with you at the end. And I have a couple recipes there that I will share with you. So it's main, let's see, we have, it's really good for your skin. So like I was showing you in that one slide that shows um, the orange essential oil coming out in one, dis one container and then the water separate. The floral water is really great for our skin. You can use it as a toner. Um, you can, that's what I mostly use it for. And they'll say Neroli flor floral water. Mother's carries it and Whole Foods Market also carries it. But what is really good is for nervousness, um, heart palpitations, anxiety, and fatigue. So if you have your orange with you, Let's take a little smell from it. You can also, like I've done, scrape a couple pieces of the peel off and even taste the peel, it's a little strong. But the aromatherapy from this plant is actually in the peel itself. So I've already pre-cut up a slice and I'm gonna put it in my water. So this is an easy way. I know a lot of people drink lemon in their water, but orange in the water is very beneficial for increasing energy, um, helping you feel calm and relaxed at the same time of energizing yourself. So it's great for first thing in the morning. So cheers to orange water. So you can also make a cleaner. Um, I have a recipe that we'll send you that is um, you use one cup of white vinegar a cup of water, a half a teaspoon of dish soap, and then 15 drops of um, orange essential oil. And um, that could be your general cleaner. You can also add a few drops in a water bottle like this. And what you do, which I'll make, I'm gonna use Neroli because that's my favorite. Um, we made this last year when we were um, sharing orange. I love orange, we live in Orange County, right? We have to like orange. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my oil, I've already put some 
spring water in here and you just add a couple drops. Oil and water don't usually mix very well, so you really have to shake up the bottle. But this would be great like when you're working out, you can have this or you could keep this in your purse. You just wanna give it a vigorous shake like this and then you can mist yourself <sighs> that way. It smells amazing. So what's really cool, like I was saying about the orange, is that there's, um, as a medicine, especially in like Chinese medicine, um, orange is called chun pi. We use the orange peel in Chinese medicine. It's really great for digestive health. But the leaves, which I don't have a leaf, I told you guys to bring a leaf, but I don't even have a leaf. So the leaf of the plant is called petit gran or petigrain. And um, that helps promote relaxation. And there was a study that showed it has remarkable radical scavenging activity, higher than the, even the flower oil and of the fruit peel of the same plant. The, the potent antioxidant effect is from the actual, there's an active chemical in this plant called um, D-limonene. So a little bit of chemistry here. And that has a lot of strong antioxidant activity. So this is petigrain or petit gran. We also have neroli, which, oops, it's a little glary, sorry. And this is from the orange blossom. So what's really cool is if you have an orange tree, uh, most people that have a good strong orange tree, they'll have an abundant amount of the orange blossoms in the, in the winter time. And feel free to harvest some of those because you're gonna have ample oranges in the spring. So you can take those orange blossoms and bring them into your house and then just put them in a little like small cup of water. To like, I loved putting that right by my bed um, or really near it because you really have to be close to really smell those orange blossoms. But it's an amazing scent. This is called Neroli. This is one of the um, most highly valued oils that are used in perfumeries throughout France. And it's one of the first oils in France hundreds of years ago that was created into a perfume. Um, findings indicate that the inhalation of Neroli helps relieve menopausal symptoms. This is fun, increases sexual desire, and reduces blood pressure in postmenopausal women, reducing stress and improving the endocrine system. So I linked a study on our slides that will talk a little bit more about that. So hence why I keep it by my bed. Uh, also, you can use bitter orange, which is from the peel, and the inhalation of the orange essential oil um, caused a significant decrease in the oxyhemoglobin concentration in the brain, helping you feel more comfortable, more relaxed, and have more natural feelings in your body. So. As we finish with orange, smell your orange plant. <sighs> and don't forget, you can make your little spray bottles. These are also available empty at Mother's Market and Whole Foods and at the container store, but I don't know if they're open yet. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna move on to fennel. Fennel seed um, is an interesting plant. It, uh, I just bought some organic fennel seeds here. And fennel seed is very popular. Um, it's in Chinese medicine, it's called xiao hui xiong. Xiong means fragrant. I'm not quite sure what xiao hui means, but it's very, it promotes the air element. So it's a vata plant in Ayurvedic medicine. Its flavor is cooling, it's sweet. It has that licorice anise flavor. It's originated in the Mediterranean um, and used by the Egyptians and Romans. And they would actually award garlands of fennel seeds to victorious warriors below, believed to bestow strength, courage, and longevity. Um, I've seen before in some nice Indian restaurants that they actually will, I'll show you right here. Let's see, there we go. So you can toast fennel seeds like I have, and it really helps promote digestion. It's one of the best oils that's for gas, bloating, flatulence. And all you do is chew the seed a little bit. You'll taste that anise flavor. You only need a couple seeds. 
before you eat to help, proper, to help promote proper digestion. The active ingredient is called anthol, and it also has antioxidant activity, antibacterial activity, anti-inflammatory, and antifungal. Antispasmodic in the way that it's the best herb for digestion. So it's really great for stomach cramping, gas, flatulence, also IBS. So what you can do is you can take one drop of the fennel essential oil, like I have here, and you can take a teaspoon of honey, and I don't have the honey here, but you would put the honey here, and then you put a drop of your fennel oil on there, and you can drink it this way, or just put it in a little cup of hot water, or you could also put it in some plant milk. If you took the first class, you probably are knowing that plant milk's better, so um, some nut milks you can use. And chewing the seeds after a meal is really helpful for pre um, promoting, or preventing bloating, I should say. There's also some um, research showing that it acts as a diuretic and an appetite suppressant. So I don't know about you, but I've definitely gained some weight during this quarantine time. So if I can just nibble on some fennel seeds, maybe I won't have as much of a sugar craving. Um, there's also been some evidence that it helps with promoting weight loss as a diuretic. So people can make a scrub where you add the fennel seed oil and you can make a salt scrub where you just combine some salts and you would pour some fennel seed oil on top of this with some massage oil and then scrub it on your stomach and on your hips and on your thighs as a way to help promote weight loss. And then one of its most beautiful uses, which I loved, is it works as a galactagogue. A galactagogue is a herb, herb property that helps promote lactation. So it's very common for breastfeeding women when their milk supply tends to diminish a little bit, perhaps when their menstrual cycle returns, as what was my case. And when you drink a tea, a fennel seed tea, it helps increase um, milk production. It does have estrogenic effects. So if you are um, avoiding any sort of estrogens in your diet because of perhaps some sort of estrogenic cancer, you probably don't want to use fennel seed in too strong or high of dosage. Um, nibbling on a couple seeds is not going to do that um, to you if you're using it to promote digestion, but if you were using it every day, it could have those effects. So that's fennel seed. I'm going to go ahead and have one more little bite. Mmm, so good. All right, we're going to move on to ginger root. So ginger root, we all kind of use this in baking a lot, or we know a lot of this for um, as an anti-inflammatory herb. It's such a beautiful root. You can use it as a powder. Um, it's not as, the essential oils kind of diminish in a powdered form as it, the strongest amount is in the fresh ginger. And um, I use, I have the doTERRA ginger oil, so I'm gonna smell that right now. It is steam distilled, like we were showing, from the rhizome. So this is called a rhizome. It's underground, and then the green, beautiful flowers are up at the top of the, um, above ground. It's been used for over 4,000 years um, by Greeks, Egyptians, Romans, India, China. The fresh herb in Chinese medicine is called shangjian, and when it's dried, it becomes a little hotter in nature, and it becomes ganjiang. Its effects are, um, or its qualities are warm, spicy, and sweet. And most commonly used as an anti-nausea medication. So we use this for upset stomach, indigestions. Um, it doesn't have as strong of effect as an anti-emetic for vomiting per se, but it does have a lot of evidence showing its effect for nausea. I also love it as an anti-inflammatory. So um, what I'm showing here, oh, back to the nausea. We could take ginger, like in these little ginger chews, you probably have seen at markets, and they're really delicious. So I'm gonna chew on one of these. And it's really good for nausea, kind of indigestion. You can just have, is this it just has some ginger and a little bit of sugar? Mm, so great. Hold on, I'm gonna have some water, wash it down. You could also put some fresh ginger in your water too, which I think I'll go ahead and do that. So back to it being an anti-inflammatory. It's a great treatment for osteoarthritis, joint pain, rheumatoid arthritis, gout. It increases circulation with its stimulating effects. 
And there has been evidence showing that it's a significant positive effect in reducing pain with different trials. So what I like to do with it is, um, if you've ever been to Thailand, there's these things called herbal compresses, and it's a form of using um, the essential oil, so, or using the plant. So this is, this is from Thailand, my, step, my stepmom's Thai, so she brings me these back all the time. And it's a bunch of herbs. What you do is you do an herbal compress. And what I wanted to demonstrate how easy it is. You can just get a napkin, a towel, or a, paper, um, a washcloth. And what you do is I've already, I just um, grind it up or grated some ginger, fresh ginger root. And I'm gonna take that in my hand. Ooh, it's nice and wet. So like that, you can see that. And you can put it into your washcloth like that. And then this is a mini version of this. Not as pretty, but you know, I'm on the spotlight here, so. And then what I do is I just take a rubber band. And then over here, I have a double boiler all hot and I can stick it in there to get it warm but for efficiency things I'm just going to lightly dip it in hot water and you kind of wring it out and then what you do is you just can put it on a painful joint so it's really great for osteoarthritis of your knee so if you have a lot of knee pain you can put this on the one thing it does do is that it, because of its hot nature um, and because it's warmed, um, like you would put it in a, like a steamer, like in a steam pan is what I was trying to say. Um, it's very, it will turn your skin kind of red. Um, and if you know you have a ginger allergy, so then obviously you wouldn't use this. Um, you could also combine this with some fresh turmeric root and make, which has, this has a lot of turmeric in it. And you could, that's really great for inflammation. So this is just one little way that you can use medicine at home, um, more of an ancient traditional way of using herbal medicine is just applying it topically on here. And you would just kind of move it around. This is not very warm for me right now, but um, in general, that's how I would use that. You could also drink, um, you could put ginger in a tea. You could put ginger oil, like one drop. You can have a um, fresh ginger in, like a slice like we put in our water, but you could just put it in um, a cup of hot tea. You can also, for gout, a really great remedy is to take the ginger and put it into a hot water bucket, which I'm gonna use that in a second for my mint, and soak your foot in that hot ginger water to help with gout pain. And what's also really lovely is to use this in massage. So one drop goes a long way. So you could just add your massage oil. And if you had a sore neck or sore back, um, you can massage that into your body. This is gingers with its hot nature is best used for kind of chronic pain, stiff muscles versus like an acute injury. If you have swelling, heat, bruising, ginger's a little bit too hot. You probably want to go a more cooling oil like mint, or some of the fur oils, this sort of thing. But that's for a different lecture. So let's say goodbye to Ginger and we're gonna move on to our mint. So I have a little bit of mint growing at my, in my back, in my little patio that I have. I love it. <sighs> mint is very cooling. It's like one of the first herbs I ever really kind of knew about this in chamomile back when I was in high school because I remember my mom used to make me mint tea and it was really lovely. It just brings me back. It's interesting how aromatherapy when you smell it, it invokes memories like instantly I was just thinking about my mom making me mint tea. I don't know why but that's just how it is. Um, it's really good for reducing fevers um, it's useful for colds and sore throats. You can make a tea out of it. Um, it also has benefits for headaches. I use mint essential oil um, very, very lightly on my temples. You have to be very careful of not um, going anywhere near your eyes. 
but it's really beneficial for headaches. You can rub it kind of all over your back of your head. You can also rub it on your large intestine four point. It's one of the ways that that's a really good point for headaches. You can put a drop of the mint oil on that way. It's great for back pain, bruise. And then this is where it's good for bruises. So if you have an acute injury, the mint is more indicated versus the ginger. It's also what's really cool is it's, it's a very stimulating for mental fatigue. So if we're really tired and have to do a long presentation like this or something and we're kind of mentally stuck, you can diffuse uh, mint in your diffuser to help you stay on focus. Um, there's been some studies that have shown that it increases your attenuation um, to cognitive tasks when you're doing like repetitive work. So it helps keep you focused. So this would be great to have burning for kids that are homeschooling right now and you really need to kind of keep them focused, keep yourself focused. The mint would be a really nice um, herb. Also, it has carminative factors, same way the fennel seed did, um, helping with gas and improving your digestion. So that's sometimes why it's interesting. Indian restaurants will give you fennel seeds and some American restaurants will give you those little Andes mints, right? So they are helping promote digestion for you that way. It also freshens your breath. So if you feel like you got some funky breath, you could just take a leaf, chew on it, and it really helps freshen your breath up. You could also put a drop of essential oil in a cup of water, which I was gonna add my mint to my, I'm gonna actually, I like to crush the leaves a little bit because that helps bring out the volatile oils a little bit more. So crushing them, and I don't really want the stem in here. And you can add it to your water or your hot tea. So you can rub the peppermint on your stomach or your feet to calm an upset stomach. You can apply it with lavender for sore muscles and joints. You can add it to your mouthwash, um, to water is like a refreshing mouthwash. You can add a drop to your shampoo of, of the uh, mint essential oil to help stimulate your scalp. So if you feel like you are have your hair thinning a little bit, you can add the mint to that to help stimulate your scalp. And one of the things I really love to do with it is use it as a foot scrub. So again, you would take your salt. This is like pink Himalayan salt and coarse Sicilian um, sea salt. And um, add about five to 10 drops of essential oil. Um, and you can either add coconut oil or just regular um, grapeseed oil, olive oil, any sort of thing. And use it as a foot scrub. It's very stimulating to the feet. So because, why not, I have a basin here, and I'm gonna do a foot bath to finish off our talk. So I put the water down here, and from the turmeric, or the, sorry, the ginger water, hot water, I'm gonna add that to my bucket. And there's nothing better, we can't go to the spas right now, so why not just do a peppermint foot soak? So I'm gonna add about 10 drops to the basin, and soak my feet. So this is really great when it's really hot outside with the really hot summer weather coming. Ah, it feels so good. Um, it can help cool us down, reducing fevers, make us not feel as hot. So with that, um, you'll get some takeaways from the talk at the end that will be sent to you that shows kind of what we were talking about and what some of the evidence shows. And that's basically all I wanted to share. So I hope you enjoyed our presentation and are able to use some herbs from your kitchen cabinet and make use of your time in quarantine and have fun, play with some oranges, chew on some fennel seeds, do a ginger compress and have a peppermint foot bath. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks, Heather. Thank you so much, Heather. That was great. I grow a lot of this stuff in my own backyard, so now I know how to use it. Thank you. Um, we have a few questions, um, so we'll just take a few minutes to answer these. Um, let's see here. Um, is there one orange oil better than others? Uh, you Okay, so I like to go with price. Um, 
the more expensive oil is usually a little bit higher quality. It depends what you're using it for. You can get like, no offense to the company now, they are a fine company, but they're not as therapeutically potent, but they're great. That, that sort of product would be really great for cleaning your house with um, or gently just diffusing your air. But if you're using it for topically on your body or if you were gonna take it internally, you're gonna to wanna to go with those um, parameters that we talked about, about making sure it's organic and that the genus and species is listed on the label. Mm. Um, and if you're using it more for that deep relaxation and anxiety effects, that's where you're gonna to tune towards more neroli. And neroli is like a very sacred oil. This little bottle is five milliliters and it cost me 30 bucks. So a little goes a long way. I don't even have to really apply it. You could just smell it and it's, you're smelling orange blossoms. So it's amazing. So I hope that makes uh, sense. Yeah. Um, wh why do people boil orange peels? Have that you is heard of people a way of like, right um, you can boil the orange peel because that's like original potpourri. So pot, you know, and pourri. So I don't know what the pourri part, but you put it in a pot. So that's the more traditional way people do it like Christmas time or at winter times where they'll take some, um, the peels, they'll add the cloves, they'll add a cinnamon stick, they'll add mm. star anise. And it's a way you can make chai tea, um, but it's a way to just make the house smell with that nice wintry spicy blend. So that's why you use it that way. Gotcha. Okay. Um, also, if you grow ginger, once you harvest it, can you use it right away? Can you just, I guess, pull that rhizome right out of the dirt and use it? I don't think so. I think with most, you have to allow it to dry just a little bit. I've never done that. I've never harvested my own ginger. So I would probably want to get back to you on that question specifically. But um, okay. Yeah, because I don't think it's fresh that way. It's not that fresh of a plant. It's not like the above ground plants. The Most of the roots you have okay. to dry properly first. Okay, uh, a couple more questions we'll take. Um, one of them says, are all essential oils safe for consumption? That's a good question. Yeah, um, you know, again, I've been using aromatherapy and learning about essential oils for over 25 years. And all my teachers have always said, don't take them internally. They are too strong. And I know a lot of companies are super okay with taking them that way. So the way I was taught is we don't take them internally um, unless they're very diluted, like one drop. These people that put them in, no, I don't, you know, I don't want to say anything negative, but people that take them in gel caps every single day, it does have to get processed through your liver. And that could be hard on the liver. So we don't really want to do that. Mm. But like adding just right. a drop of mint in some water is okay. Mint is one of the ones that are safe. Okay. There are some that are completely unsafe internally. So you'd really want to ask someone that's really strong with aromatherapy on which oils you can and cannot take. Okay. And then um, should we select a certain brand for consumption? Again, you I want to look into the ones that are organic. So would you take... Okay. You know, would you prefer to have commercial oranges or would you rather have an organic orange? So um, you don't want to take in those pesticides. So you really need to look sure. for a reputable brand. Um, this brand I really like. I'm not, this is called, it's hard to see. It's a little blurry. It's called Prana Rome. And um, they occasionally sell them at health food stores. Um, and they're a really great company. They used to be called Veritas, which was, they had them at, uh, I think they do still carry these at Mother's Market. Um, and uh, I'm just not the biggest fan of the brands now in Oracacia. They just um, are more commercially made. There are ones that, like the Oracacia does have a line that's organic, so it's a little bit better. So if I was gonna use Oracacia, I would probably use that organics line. But um, okay. yeah. Great, thank you. Um, I think that's it. Thanks, Heather. Thank you so much. We learned so much from you as always. Thank you. Um, and we're, we're excited that we're going to be able to share Heather's five takeaways from today's uh, session. We'll be doing, uh, sending you a follow, everyone a follow-up email with um, Heather's five takeaways. 
She's even willing to share her presentation. There's a lot of information that Heather had on her PowerPoint presentation that we can share with you that's a little bit of a deeper dive and shows you some of the evidence-based research behind everything that she talked about today. Um, and also, we are going to be posting all these videos from today, these sessions, if you're not able to join them all on our YouTube channel. We have a Sam Welly Institute YouTube channel, so if you subscribe, you'll be notified when these are added uh, in the coming weeks. Um, and we just want to say thank you for all uh, joining us today virtually. Um, we miss seeing, of course, everybody in person would have, would have been today, um, but we're, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next year. Also, we wanted to invite you to join our Samueli Institute Wellbeing Circle. It's our donor society um, where it's a thousand dollar donation a year and you are invited to eight discovery events, just like today's events they are in person usually. We do four lunch and learns with our providers. It's a really good community group of people. Um, you're able to ask questions with the providers on um, all different types of topics. And then we do four discovery excursions, and those are with Heather. And we've done hikes with Heather, we've done paddling with Heather in Back Bay and Newport. And Heather really kind of takes us through this journey through Orange County. She shares, uh, she's a naturalist, so she shares the history of Orange County with us, really interesting things about um, the people that uh, lived on these lands, the plants, um, native plants, it's really great. We do a meditation. So, um, and you're allowed to bring a, a guest to each one of these events in addition to for free. So, and we're offering that for only $800 for this month. Um, and if you're interested in joining, we'll be sending you some information on that as well. So we just want to say thank you so much, Heather. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Thank you. That was fun. To our oranges today. So thanks everybody. <laughs>